I'm Gentleman Josh Hill. I'm Aaron Jeffrey. I'm Jason Jasbizius. I'm Mike Malak. I'm Rafi on Stop. Tune into Don't Tap. Don't Tap. Don't Tap. Don't Tap Podcast. Don't Tap Podcast. John Jones. Follow me on Twitter. Hey, I'm UFC President Dana White, and you're in the ring with Callum McGregor. Moments that were last weekend. We'll start right there, actually. Like, before we look forward, let's look back. Um, Jasmine pretty much upsets everybody that was doubting her, comes in and smashes. Not only, like, dominates. I think it was the number one performance of the night. You know, we all love Mike. We all love the hype. We all love all the other guys. That's great. But what Jasmine did that night was was awe-inspiring. And talk about, you know, I, I've referenced this pre pre on when some other guys, cappers, saying her, her striking wasn't good and this and that. I'm like, guys... Most women are, are training with other women in, in, in at the UFC level. Jasmine's in there smashing with like Tisha Guthrow, yeah. with Cody Chavante. Like she's in there and sparring with these guys nonstop. These guys are killers and you don't know who they are, but you will very, very soon. And let's talk about that very, very soon. So as we, we go from the inspiring moment last weekend, I want you to transition into your championship run starting next, next week. Um. Yeah, she fucking smashed that girl. I knew it was happening. I the sparring with her this camp, fucking, she's giving me work, man. Just uh, her striking is fucking. She was down in this whole camp. I put big money on her, just cause I fucking knew that they had. I saw that, man. Tell, talk about that ticket. What was that? Mike Malott and Jasmine Jasmine Divicious parlay. Yeah, just to win thirty-two fifty to win six uh fifteen seven. Man. So. Yeah, that's nice. Um, but it, it's belief and it's like, yeah, you, you see it, right? You see the work, you see the improvements. And it's like, the one I thing I think that, that people look at with Jasmine and they say her age a lot, right? And it's like, well, you, you misconstrue age for time in the game, right? Time in the game, if somebody's young in the game, they're only going to have young. improvement every camp. Yeah, yeah man. She's still young. Like yeah, they, but then cappers and people, when they look at fights, they look at age and they, they'll over scrutinize it, right? Yeah. But for you. Doing it. What's that? I said, I hope they keep doing it. Put her as the underdog. Yeah, man, give me that plus money. I was already plus money on Jasmine. We'll talk about her for a minute. Um, plus 265 for her wrestling? Yeah. And if it ends up being a wrestling fight, then that's the case. And then she comes up with a striking. As soon as she did that, I was like, ching, 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 ching. Give me, give me that cash. So amazing job by her. Forget even the money side of things. Just, to, you know, it's an inspiring time. And, and talking to on my podcast um, the other day was – you know, I was at UFC 129, and it was inspiring to be in that building, and the moment was really inspiring. But this is the most inspiring moment, I think, for Canadian MMA as a whole. I think to show the growth of it, and then to see, like, the regional scene tail off of it, and with you guys going for championship belts and everything, and, and the gyms coming along, it, it's very, very inspiring as a fan. Someone running a podcast, so passionate that I am, I love seeing this stuff. So talk about... Going into next week, I know that, you know, you want to ride some momentum going into your fight. Um, talk about your opponent, Eric Shelton. You know, he does present some problems. He presents some power. Um, but, man, I, I watch tape, and that's what I do, right? I'm not trying to just be an interviewer here. I watch tape, and I just don't know if you're not a good matchup for that man. Your pressure, your mix-up of wrestling, constant change of levels, throwing that big power, how like, people have to hide from it. It's scary. So talk about your opponent and talk about what he brings to the table to intrigue you. Or you just give me another clip of you saying, I'm going to smash this fool. He's good. He's basic. Like, he hasn't developed his skills in, like, the last six fights. Um, he just keeps it the same shit, really. Ones and twos. He's patient. He, like, uh, likes to feel it out. I'm going to put pressure on him right away. Or not. I don't know. I'll see how the first round goes. I'm going to take my time. But if he's the same fighter I see him every fight, then fucking I'm going to dust him. Um... Okay, wrestling. His jits seems pretty bad, to be honest. Like, I know he's a black belt, but uh, his last fight of watching, he's just not good off his back. Like, his get ups aren't good. His understanding off his back isn't good. Um, his striking is good. He's got good boxing. Okay, kicks. He's just, he's not developing. He's the same fighter, man. I'm going to come. You know, he has no fucking idea what I've been doing the last seven months. He watches that last fight against Morgan. I barely strike that fight. I barely strike last year. No one knows what my striking is like right now. Really, it's kind of hidden. Um, They all think, he thinks I'm coming to wrestle. I am coming to wrestle. Some wall work. It's the same shit, but I'm coming to put him out. Um, I got five rounds to play, so it's going to be fun.
without highlighting, you know, too much of that wrinkle that you're sort of alluding to, you know, I've noticed something in Amin Amalek, I've noticed something in, in Ashley, um, you know, in Ashley Nichols that all Muay Thai bases and you guys now adopting this more boxing approach to your MMA, the footwork, the importance of the jab to sort of run the dance and control the scenario, whether you're going to be able to set up your wrestling behind it, set up your striking behind it. And some people don't even realize the importance of the jab of keeping wrestlers off of you. You don't have to really worry about that, but it's really important with controlling and, and, and hiding that. So talk about sort of, you know, without showing too much of the, the boxing side of things, talk a little bit about that new wrinkle to your game that you're bringing and bringing up and bringing towards your fight this weekend or uh, next weekend. I just had a new boxing coach, my boy, Jesse Salos, uh, city boxing in the falls. We're working with him for like four or five months now. Fucking hands are sharp, man. Um, like right away, uh, D Marks realized how much quicker I got, how my range changed in the pocket, how like, just man, it's crazy how I leveled up so quick with my boxing. But um, he's gonna find out. He thinks he's quicker. Like he's, we'll see. He might be, but I'm gonna catch him. Time and beats fucking speed, and I'm gonna be persistent and pressure. Ah, uh, he's never been finished, so I really wanna fucking put him away. I mean. Uh, and there's no better time for you to go in and just finish somebody, grab that belt, grab, grab that mic, and take your shot. Yeah, so yeah, let's go. that's what I'm saying, man. Like, you know, that's where that moment, and, and people are going to be like, so, hey, Cal, who's this Tiche guy? I'm like, well, see, Jasmine, that was the guy I was talking about. This team, there's so many teams out there where you have people that are at the top, you'll have two or three people, and the other guys are sort of role players. And that's just not the case at, at Niagara Top Team, man. No. You guys have played a huge role in there and them, them getting to where they are. But now you guys are about to crack up and you guys are all killers. Like there's no way, all, all of you, like Kevin, Cody, all of you that I see, you guys are all going to crack into either Bellator, PFL or, or UFC. It's very obvious with how you approach fights. It's very obvious with your work ethic in that room. It, it's just, a, it's impossible not to see. When you first got into fighting, when you first got that passion, what was it that drove you to getting into combat sports? Um, I've always been into it. Like, I grew up watching WWE. Uh, I used to watch, like, old Chuck Liddell when I was, like, fucking 12, 13. I was, like, a fat kid growing up. And fucking, I got in a lot of fights. Like, I wouldn't say I got bullied. Like, people, but I'd end up fighting. So you don't really get bullied, you know what I mean? Um, people I just go make a watch. comment and get a three-piece. Yeah, for real. Um, I was raised, like, talk shit, get hit. Mm -hmm. I don't ever let like, someone disrespect you. So I was always, like... I had a really rough childhood too, so very violent. I seen a lot of violence at a young age, and just yeah, family was a little different than most. You know what I mean? A little different. Seen it like to me, fighting so easy, cause like fucking, I grew up watching way harder shit than that, and like it was like normal violence. So I don't know. I guess I just always loved fucking fighting, man. And then um, I was fighting in high school. My principal got me into it. Fucking. Like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, in life? I'm like, I want to fight. Like, I knew the UFC was out there. I was fat. I'm like, fuck, that'd probably be the hardest possible thing I could ever do. You know what I mean? Like, mentally, yep. physically. So I was like, let's fucking do that. And then from now I'm here. I think that's a common uh, thing where, where fighters, I mean, everybody in the world has their own story and their own trials and tribulations and challenges. But a lot of fighters find that to find their voice, it's when, it, when they're training, man. When they're in the cage, like Jasmine talks about when she feels that her best is when she's training for a fight, ready for a fight, um, just the high of it and everything else. So for you now transitioning into this professional career, transitioning into this platform for yourself, I appreciate you sharing. Um, I, I love when, when fighters can sort of peel back the layers a little bit because it's great to see someone who can go, go in and beat somebody up, talk some shit and say they can do it. But to show that other side is pretty important as well too. Um, I've shared my story. I share my story purposefully so people will share their story as well too five years sober, challenging with alcohol. And we all have these challenges and trials and tribulations, but it's how you channel it. It's how you take it. So it's inspiring for people to see this kind of information out there, right? So um, now for you, let's just wrap this up. Cause like I said, I don't want to take up too much time. I wanted to, to you know, dig into your, your mindset a little bit, but I want you to just sort of drop that unified clip. Let's get that out there. Let's get the, the data out there. Let's get what you're going to do to your opponent out there. And, uh, We'll go from there. June 23rd, uh, next Friday, Unified Title Belt, 135er, Eric Shelton's UFC vet, 
knocking him the fuck out. Uh, say fly knee, third or fourth round. If it comes quicker, it comes quicker, but I want to put him out. I want to put him out to where the world takes notice and fucking UFC understands what the fuck I'm about. Well, they kind of do, actually. I just got a message from the UFC PR guy for, uh, that runs the UFC uh, channel like on the internet. I got an interview with him tomorrow. So awesome. That's some Bro, I woke up to that message. I was like, fucking, let's go. So I guess they are taking notice. So well, I mean. Put a stamp on that shit. That's it. You put a stamp on that. If they're already sort of looking at it, even if it's at a certain level, it's only a matter of time before that call for Dana White Contender Series or whatever comes, right? But uh, before that. I want UFC. Let's go. UFC right there. Fuck uh, yeah, you know, they, that's fair enough. I mean, with the UFC even come to Toronto, that's that, yeah, that prelim so they, card, right? Get on that prelim card. You might have to get one more fight under your belt, whatever, but. Who cares, man? This one's it, bro. This one's got to be. You know, I get the biggest. Dude, I get it. I get this it. Is the hardest hey. fucking fight out there, right? I didn't have to say yes. I could have found someone way. You know what I mean, who's gonna? Who else is gonna take this fight? That's how I see it, right? It's a hard fight. It's a well, it's a hard fight to other people. To me, I look at it like I'm gonna fucking. Yeah. And what is it? That, you know, I was gonna wrap it up, but I have one more thing I wanted to ask you. What does it mean to headline a card? You know, with guys like Ergus, with guys like Vlad, with guys like Bobby. Like, these are all other killers that are going to be up in, in the big leagues real soon, too. And Canada's going to have a wave of fighters all at the top. What does it mean to headline a card for such well-respected, um, high-level athletes? Like, um, it feels pretty good. I, to be honest, I downplay a lot of this shit. Like, being main event, like, unified title, like... Because it does mean a lot, but it really doesn't because, like, I have way bigger dreams. It's just part of the journey. But it, it is, like, looking back at it, it's going to be pretty cool because mm -hmm. I'll be, like, I mean, a main event and all my boys are fighting underneath me. But um, right now, at this moment, it, like, right as we're talking, I really could get up to a fuck. I just want to put this boy out and um, UFC. And that's where and my career restarts and then top 15. You know what I mean? It's like I, I just downplay moments because they're not as big as I think they really they are but once i'm done at winning the boat and shit that's gonna be hype so yeah it's not, right? not i know i get it it's not a disrespect to the card it's not a disrespect to anybody it's more about the laser focus on you got one focus right now you know yeah. focus on the fight you know it's all got its value but you don't need to put its value in your head right now but just yeah. just just curious if you think about those things maybe that's more of a retrospective it's, thing it's a good way to look at it though spent, after the fight i'll probably look more at it and be like fuck that's awesome yeah but right now it's not that big it, it is what it is it is it's gonna happen. I'm gonna win. Fucking yeah! It's gonna be a good night. And you're in the tunnel. D marks in your ear. What's the thought process as you're walking out? Uh, me, I'm gonna be thinking of fucking savage thoughts. And D marks saying, like, calm down. It's just a sparring session. We do what we do every day. Just stay focused. Flow zone. Find your flow zone. Fucking don't get over. You know what I mean? Cause I'm hype. I get like he doesn't have to fucking get me hype. He has to calm me down and like keep my mind clear. And, yeah, we have a good thing going. We've been doing this fucking what? Probably ten fights. You know, probably like twenty fights deep. Can kick amateur kickboxing. The amateur we made a pro. So we have a very good bond. And then there's gonna be awesome. fucking there in my ear hype hype me up. You know, it's the yin and the yang. Uh, Tisha Guthrow, my house. June 23rd, next Friday, Unified, Bantamweight title, let's fucking go.